du, du, du. We're going to continue on in our series in the Gospel of John. Today we're in John chapter 3. And we're going to be talking about new beginnings, new opportunities, new, new challenges that we get to take on and new victories that we get to see in our lives. And new beginnings, I believe, and of course, according to John chapter 3, it all starts through Jesus and what he's made available to us. Jesus, in John chapter 3, he talks with one of the religious leaders at the time, Nicodemus, and he begins to tell Nicodemus what it means to truly have a relationship with God. And, and Nicodemus struggles with this a little bit and trying to figure out, well, what are you talking about? Why do I need this new relationship? Even though he knows that Jesus has been sent by God as a teacher, but he doesn't fully understand who Jesus is. So Jesus begins to unpack to him that he really Really is the Messiah, the one that God has promised to send, that he's now here, and that God has a new relationship that he wants to establish with his people and with his creation, with us. And in John chapter 3, verse 3, he says, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asks. Surely they can't enter a second time into their mother's womb. And, of course, this would be a, a statement that all of us would respond to probably in a similar manner that how can I be born again? I mean, I've been born once. I'm big. I'm old. There's no way this is going to happen again in the natural. But Jesus begins to unpack this to him to understand this isn't a natural birth. This is something that God wants to do. And in order for us to step into the kingdom of God and to truly even see the kingdom of God here on earth today, we must be born again. Not a natural thing, Jesus says. Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. And, and when we allow the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of God, to give us new life and to give us new breath, as it were. We get to actually engage in the kingdom of God and what the kingdom of God is meant to do for humanity, meant to do for us and meant to do for those around us. See, flesh is limited to our own natural birth, and our spirit is limited to our spiritual birth. So if our spirit hasn't been born again, if we haven't been born by the spirit, our spirit is limited to our natural birth and our natural being is limited to our natural birth. But when we're born again, we begin to see God do something new and supernatural in our life. And that's when we can engage in the kingdom of God in a whole new way and engage in what God has means for his his kingdom to come to earth. When Jesus says, when you pray, pray this way. Our Father in heaven, how will it be your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To engage in kingdom activity activity and to see his kingdom come in your life, in my life, we have got to be born again. Our flesh takes on the ability of our spirit. If our spirit is just natural, it's just what we were born with, then our flesh takes on that natural ability. Newborn babies have, I believe, new opportunities. I love it when we have kids that are new babies that are born here in the church and we have this opportunity to dedicate them and, and we pray over them. And dedication for us as a church when it comes to babies is we're basically telling God, thank you for this new life. Thank you for this new opportunity. Thank you for this gift that you've given us. And we give this gift back to you symbolically. We say, God, we put this child in your hands. And God, we want your purposes and your plans to to reign in this child's life, for your kingdom to come in their life. Now, we understand that by praying for them and, and praying this prayer and dedicating them back and the parents saying, yes, we're going to do our best to raise this child to know who Jesus is, that doesn't change the child. But it is a commitment that we make that we're going to teach that child about who Jesus is and what Jesus has done so that one day they too can be born again. They can choose to accept Jesus into their heart, into their life. You see, when a child is born, they have all kinds of opportunities in front of them. They have all kinds of things. The, the world is their oyster, as it were. They, they can do whatever. 
And as they grow up, they learn to do certain things. But until their spirit is engaged by Holy Spirit, until they accept who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for them, they're still just naturally born. So all of the things that they can do in life are just naturally given to them. But when that individual, you or I, that baby, grows up, comes to the understanding that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus came to give us life and life to its full, that Jesus came to remove sin from our life and allow his spirit to take up residency in us, that we can be born of the spirit. When that child, when you and I realize we can be born of the spirit, we unlock the kingdom of God in our lives. We unlock the potential that God has for us. There's new opportunities available to us the moment that we're born again. Just as that baby is born, all kinds of opportunities are available to them. When you're born again, when I'm born again, new opportunities open to us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11, Paul writes to the Corinthian church and he tells them here, he said, I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts or things that the Spirit of God can do in your life. He said, I want you to understand the opportunities that are in front of you. When you're born of the Spirit, when you have this relationship with God, His Spirit takes up residency in you and His Spirit gives you new opportunities. He says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them to everyone. He said there are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but all in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. It's his spirit at work in us. Now to each one, a manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. That God gives us his spirit in our lives, not just for us. It is for us, and he works in us for us, so that we can experience the kingdom of God in our lives and through our lives. But it's for the common good, too. It's for others all around us, those that we come in contact with daily. The spirit of God that lives within us gives us new opportunities to enhance their life, to encourage them, to build them up, to literally bring the kingdom of God to them. The spirit... (coughs) He goes on, he says, to one a manifestation of the, of the Spirit, a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge. By means of the same Spirit, another by the, Spirit, by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that same Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still to another interpretation of those tongues. Spiritual things that can happen in our lives and through our lives that God empowers us to do through this being born again. To being born by his spirit. All these are at work in one and the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. God gives us these opportunities in life, these new opportunities in this spiritual life, just as he determines, as he sees that we need them, as he sees that we'll use them, as he sees that it will, it will increase his kingdom and move his kingdom forward, he distributes his gifts of his spirit in our life. Jesus tells us that if, if, if you as natural fathers and mothers that, that do stupid things, that are evil at times, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to you? And I love to look at it this way, as give us good gifts, but give us new opportunities because we're newborns. We're newborns with new opportunities, with new options, with, with new potential that we can see his kingdom move forward. See, new birth brings new opportunities and new abilities. Jesus has given you the ability through his spirit to do things you could never do in the natural. So don't limit your spirit. Don't limit your spirit by just living your life in the natural. Begin to step into what God has in store for your natural life by allowing your spirit to be renewed, by allowing your spirit to come alive in Jesus, by allowing your spirit to be connected to Holy Spirit and then his spirit giving us new life and new abilities. And when that happens, we're literally, we're born again, but we're actually 
born into a family. Just like in, in the natural birth, you're born into a family. When it comes to the kingdom of God and when it comes to spiritual birth, we're actually born into a family. We're born into what's considered the family of God, the family of believers. And that's why when, when Paul writes to the Corinthians church, he says it's for the common good. The gifts of the spirit are for the common good. And he writes also to the Roman church and he says it's for the common good again. He says, so in Christ, though many form one body, and each member belongs to the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. If your gift is prophesy, and then prophesy in accordance with your faith. And faith is key when it comes to that spiritual birth. It's faith in who Jesus is and what he's done that gives us that spiritual birth. And it's faith in his spirit working in our lives that enables us to have this spiritual authority, to have this new opportunity to walk in these spiritual gifts. He says, according to your faith, prophesy. Uh, he also, verse 7, he goes on, he says, if it is serving, then serve. If, if it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement to all of those around you. If it is giving, if, if God's gifted you through his spirit with the ability to raise finances, to give generously, to, to bless other people with the gift that God has given you. If it is to lead, then do it diligently. Then, then step in there and lead and, and lead others to Christ. Lead others in, in the authority that they have in Christ. Leave others in those spiritual gifts to discover their gifts about how God has created them and the opportunities that he's given for them to be a blessing to other people. If it is to show mercy, then do it cheerfully. If it's to be that person that will come alongside of others that are hurting and lift them up and encourage them. If it's that person to be able to see people that have done things, that, man, that others would just cast them aside. And you've got that mercy gift in you. Stand beside them and lift them up and encourage them and see God do something amazing in their life. You have an important role in the family of God. If you've been born again, you have an important role that God has created you special. And, and when John is recording this and Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and John shows us about how you have to be born, not just of the natural, but born of the spirit. He, he introduces to us that through this, God wants to do things in your life, not just natural things but spiritual things, supernatural things. And when you're born of the Spirit, you're born into the family and you have family responsibilities. Now we understand Jesus' role in all of this as Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, he's really talking about himself and what God is going to do through his life and his ministry here on earth that God sent him here with a purpose. He's the son of God. He's literally God in the flesh and he's here for a purpose and that is to bring humanity and give humanity that opportunity to be born again. He goes on in John chapter 3 and he describes what's going to happen and what's going to happen through his life. And in verse 14, he says, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness when people were sick and he lifted the snake up in the wilderness as, an, as a symbol of that God is going to bring healing into the camp. And so the Son of Man must be lifted up and everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. To save the world through his sacrifice, that Jesus would be lifted up on the cross, that he would give his life. And for all of us that would believe on him, on his sacrifice, that we would be saved. In John chapter 14, verse 6, John tells us, he says this, And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. When Jesus is asked about what it means to have relationship with God, he just simply says, you get to know God because you know me. When you know me, when you believe in me, that's how you're going to get there. In Matthew, Jesus states this. He says, narrow is the gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, that leads to new life, that leads to be born again. And only a few find it. 
The reason only a few find it is because they're not desiring to focus on the one thing. There's so many things out there that people say, yeah, you need this in your life. This is going to make your life better. This is what you need to chase after. This is, there's all kinds of ways to God, but there's really only one way to true life. There's really only one way to know Jesus and, or to know God, and that is through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way to relationship with God and to be born of the Spirit. So I encourage you, if you're seeking out spiritual things and, and you're even here today or you're watching us online or you're watching us on, on TV, whatever it might be, and you're seeking out spiritual things and saying, man, my spirit, there's something wrong inside of me. There's something I, different that I need. Jesus is the one that can give you new life. He's the one that can give you a new spirit. He's the one that can give you new opportunities. Step into what he's done for you and allow him to transform your life by giving you new birth, a new spirit. His spirit connects with your spirit and your spirit has new birth. And when your spirit comes alive, your entire body comes alive, your entire life comes alive. And you have new opportunities through who Jesus is and what he's done in your life. Newborns have new opportunities. Don't let your spirit Sorry, we'll cut that a little bit. Don't limit your spirit. So let me start there. Newborns have new opportunities. Don't limit your spirit. Don't limit your spirit by just living in the natural. Step into the role that you get when you're born again. That new opportunity that God has for you for his spiritual gifts to be awakened within you in the kingdom of God, to be established in you and through you in your community, in your church, in, in your workplace, in your family, that you have these new opportunities and new abilities through his spirit. Step into your role and let Jesus give you new life.